Hello there, so I like mapping, creating something new, sharing it with people, interacting with the mapping community, all that's fun stuff. But not everything's fun. Every map with less than 5 minutes of total drain time requires a full spread, and considering most songs are shorter than that, ranking maps means making a lot of spreads. An acceptable spread has at least two difficulties which go through these linearly while appealing to the lowest tier of players. So for example, if a mapper wants an insane on their set, they must include at least a simplistic normal for the sake of new players and a hard for the sake of linear spread. Sounds basic on paper, but in reality, it's not. How do we judge what difficulty each of these actually is? The biggest misconception new mappers have is that difficulties are judged through star rating. Star rating doesn't accurately depict difficulty, but rather spacing and rhythm intensity for clickable objects. That means only circles and slider heads count, while slider ends and slider bodies are kind of irrelevant. Types of movement and complexity of placements also make up difficulty, but aren't part of star rating at all. Difficulties are instead judged by what skill-related elements they use, regardless of what their star rating or difficulty icon may say. Okay then, so what are these skill-related elements? What elements are there that make up an easy? And what about a normal? Hard? Insane? Extra? This is where explaining things gets a bit complex. There is multiple acceptable elements within each difficulty, but by using whichever of these elements you want, you won't always have a perfect spread. Instead of going over what these are, I'll try to explain what makes a spread acceptable first. Let's say, hypothetically, difficulty is measured through the number of difficulty elements a map uses. An easy difficulty has a maximum of 10 difficulty elements, then a normal increases difficulty by having up to 20 elements, hard has up to 30, insane has up to 40, yeah, you get it. Anything between these numbers would be that difficulty. Because each difficulty gets harder by adding 10 elements exactly, a spread where 10 elements are added on each consecutive difficulty would be a perfectly acceptable spread. It would also be linear, which I said is good earlier, and that's what the beatmap nominator test supports too. Except, the beatmap nominator test is wrong here. Well, no, it's not wrong, it's just not entirely right. What's more important for spread than linear gaps is that gaps between difficulties aren't ever too large. So, for example, an easy could use 8 elements and a normal could use 12 elements. A 4 element difference is pretty small, but that doesn't really matter. 8 is still an easy and 12 is still a normal. However, if the hard here used all 30 possible elements, there would be a huge gap from normal to hard. In this case, it doesn't matter that difficulties are still technically a normal and a hard, their difference is just too big, so the spread won't work. What would work is a hard using around 22 elements, since the hypothetical cutoff for a large gap in this situation is 10 new elements. It's irrelevant for spread that this isn't a perfect line from easy to normal to hard, all that matters is that the gaps between difficulties are not too large. So that is a lot to take in, but let's think back for a second. I said earlier, if a mapper wants an insane on their set, they must include at least a simplistic normal for the sake of new players. This essentially means the lowest difficulty in a spread can be a normal, but that isn't always the case. In order for a normal to be acceptable as a lowest difficulty, it needs to be simplistic. And to be simplistic, it has to use only a few of the elements normal difficulties introduce. So a normal with 20 elements is a normal, but would be acceptable as a lowest difficulty, whereas one with 12 elements would. Do you get it? I really hope you do, because I have no better way to explain spread other than this really vague hypothetical situation. In reality, measuring spread is done in a similar way to this, but not nearly as convenient or straightforward. First, not every difficulty has an equal amount of new elements to introduce. There's also the fact that some difficulty elements are straight up unacceptable on certain difficulties. And most importantly, not every difficulty element introduced on a map is a binary yes or no thing. Perfectly calculating this linear stuff is kind of impossible, despite it being theoretically the best way to judge a spread. Because of how ambiguous spread is, the ranking criteria has a sort of guide to explain every element that could make up each difficulty. If your map follows the rules and guidelines listed it under a difficulty, it probably is appropriate for its name. If it breaks too many of the guidelines, it may be more appropriate renamed to something else. There are, of course, loopholes to this ranking criteria stuff, so the human element of judging spread is kind of never going to go away. And now you probably want to know what each difficulty element is. Well, uh, at first I planned on explaining all those, but I quickly realized how impractical that was. It's not that I can't do it, because I definitely can, I just can't make it interesting. So I'll give you a sort of abridged version, explaining what every difficulty is supposed to be like. 
Easies are for babies. They're repetitive and basic to teach players the mechanics of the game. If you're doing anything remotely controversial on an easy, you're just doing it wrong. Normals are the next step up. They start using denser rhythm and higher spacing, but are for the most part similar to easies, which is why they can be the lowest difficulty if mapped accordingly. Hards are where players get screwed. Okarin, a QAT member, wrote an article explaining why, which I won't be repeating here, but basically hards permit a lot of confusing elements, more than one would expect after seeing the difference between most easies and normals. Insanes and extras are conceptually similar, so I like to group them together. There's nothing really banned from either one, as long as they're just lost logically consistent, they're probably workable. Density and rhythm are usually the most definitive factors between both difficulties, meaning less dense, less spacing is for an insane, more intense stuff for an extra. And that's pretty much it. If you want to know more about each difficulty, you can read the specifics on the ranking criteria, or you know what, I can read them to you. You deserve it, you made it this far. It's gonna be really boring though, don't expect anything.